good morning to all of you last class we were discussing the condensation heat transfer the condensation over a flat vertical plate we discussed and derived the expression for the local and average heat transfer coefficient and also the heat flux and accordingly the rate of condensation which was developed by nashel and known as a very popular expression as nashel's expression for condensation over a flat vertical surface now at the end of the last class a few questions came up by few students and i discussed with them and i want to discuss it in mass uh, to inform you that when we discussed about the inclined plate and i told that in inclined plate when the flame takes place the effective gravity is if the angle with the horizon is theta effective gravity is g sin theta so that in the entire expression g can be replaced by g sin theta because the component of g which acts in this direction if we take the coordinate system along the plate and in the transverse direction at x and y so the question came that there is an effective gravity in the y direction so therefore del p del y cannot be made zero from the navier stokes equation is 100% correct in that case del p del y is not zero it is balanced by the body force pressure force is balanced by the body force there is no motion but what happens is that even if del p del y is not zero is a very good question i told the del p del y not equal to zero but it is constant and it doesn't matter whether there is a pressure drop across the thin film which is never delays not zero identically zero but del p del x in the vapor region and the film remains the same and what we require is the del p del x expression to solve for the velocity profile even if there is a pressure difference or pressure gradient in the y direction it doesn't matter which is taken care of by the effective body force or the component of weight in the direction of y this is number one query and another question which is a lovely question and i appreciate few of you ask me still it is there with me but the only answer i will tell you is that it's a following a classical convention without any uh, what i will call that way logic that sir when we solve a conduction equation with a fluid whose motion is either extremely small or there is no motion at all and we simply solve the conduction equation you will see these things afterwards also of course i think in your free convection these things have not been covered because it is beyond your scope that at the onset of bennett convection the <coughs> flow between two plates lower one is heated upper one is cold so the convective current takes place which is known as bennett convection but before certain delta t temperature difference the fluid motion is inappreciable there is no fluid motion the motion is arrested by the viscous force only after a certain temperature difference the motion sets in so below that temperature difference when the fluid motion is totally inappreciable we solve the conduction equation there are many cases where we solve the conduction equation totally neglecting the advection effect but whenever it is a heat transfer between a solid and a fluid the beauty is that we refer it to a convection equation in the conduction limit and define the heat transfer coefficient so though heat transfer coefficient comes only in the convection heat transfer which is the heat transfer by conduction affected by flow affected by advection but even if advection doesn't affect it or it is so small we solve only the conduction but still we define the heat transfer co coefficient because that we are dealing with the fluid adjacent solid that's all this is the convention and there are many such uh, situations in heat transfer where we express heat transfer coefficient which is never done in case of solid heat transfer through solid this is a very good question and i'm happy to tell you and to document it for a wider mass okay now i will tell you uh, something just before closing this discussion this flow takes place like that and there is a reynolds number for condensate flow you know this is the condensate flow this is the liquid 
flim, liquid flim flows, liquid which is known as condensate, which is known in the uh, practical terminology as condensate. There is a Reynolds number of condensate flow, which is defined as density of the liquid, the average velocity, the hydraulic diameter divided by the liquid viscosity. And in all such expressions, the liquid density, viscosity, everything, here I am not putting L because viscosity is only for the liquid since the density of the vapor comes into question. So I am denoting it as rho L and rho V. So all the liquid properties are usually evaluated at a mean arithmetic mean temperature of Tw and Tv. That means Tw plus Tv by 2. And this is known as in our language flim conditions. Sometimes we tell the properties are evaluated at flim conditions. Means the arithmetic average, all properties are evaluated at a temperature, which is arithmetic average of the surface and the vapor temperature. So this is rho L mu evaluated like that. And V average, by definition, you know fluid mechanics, it is the volumetric flow rate divided by the cross sectional area divided by the cross-sectional area. That means one can write that m dot by rho L into A. And dh is the hydraulic diameter which is four area by perimeter. That is enough. But some information I give you, we will not go for any other analysis, that this Reynolds number definition is important because beyond the Reynolds number, Re greater than 1800, instability occurs at the thin film interface and the flow becomes turbulent and this instability onset takes place with the formation of ripples at the surface. In practice it has been found even at a relatively much lower Reynolds number than 1800, sometimes the instability occurs because this depends not only on the Reynolds number, sometimes on the surface condition and other properties of the liquid apart from the rheological property mu and rho. So therefore, this is just for an information that a thin flame flowing past the plate may become, uh, well, may become uh, turbulent depending upon the situation where the Reynolds number is high or low. In practice, it is not always that a plate will be there for condensation. Usually tubes are there. Yesterday, at the beginning, I told you the examples where the liquid, one of the fluids is flowing through the tubes. For example, the power plant condenser, the condenser of the refrigerator, the water tube in a boiler. So usually the flow takes place through tube and usually the tube cross section is circular. But various cross sections are tried to enhance the rate of heat transfer. Just I tell you certain things that in a circular tube, usually what we use, it looks like that. if tube is horizontal like this the horizontal tube and if the vapor flows like this either cushion vapor or vapor flow flows with a very gentle velocity then what happens it looks like this the flame grows the picture is like this and tickles down the surface of the this is the tube tickles down the surface. This is the flame. This is the flame tickles down the surface of the tube. Now the rate of heat transfer will be increased if we can decrease the flame thickness like a decrease of thermal boundary layer. If you decrease the flame thickness, you know the temperature gradient will be enhanced. Delta T by thickness of the Tw, Tv minus Tw divided by delta. It is just like the reduction of thermal boundary layer. So in any condensation problem, our motto will be to drain the condensate, to drain the condensate, this is the condensate, to drain the condensate, this is condensate, to drain the condensate, condensate, this is the terminology, to drain the condensate as fast as possible so that the thickness of the flame at any location is small. So therefore, different cross-sectional shape has been considered which gives an effective gravity mode so that this can make the drainage of the condensate faster. Now, in case of a vertical cylinder, the information is like this. 
in case of a vertical cylinder condensation outer surface in the vertical cylinder vapor is there we can use the expression for particle flat plate provided the diameter of the cylinder is much much higher than the thickness of the liquid film then we can use it this is another information today everything will be informative no deduction nothing just for your information another information i tell you because of the turbulence it has been found experimentally without going for any analytical results the expression developed in the laminar flow for heat transfer coefficient is getting enhanced by a factor of 1.2 to 1.3 that is 20 to 30 percent so sometimes in industry they gave this allowance to evaluate the heat flux and design the condenser accordingly and with this i will end this discussion on condensation now we will move to boiling heat transfer so the one now i will discuss the boiling heat transfer now boiling is a very complicated heat transfer phenomenon both from fluid dynamical and heat transfer point of view this you will understand when i will explain this so only a qualitative picture of the boiling heat transfer and some pertinent informations will be given in this class and frankly speaking the analysis of boiling heat transfer is very tough it is much beyond the scope of your uh, syllabus uh, the scope of your studies at the moment now boiling is just the opposite of condensation here what happens if a liquid at saturation temperature comes into contact with any hot body whose temperature is above the saturation temperature the boiling starts for example if we consider liquid water at one atmospheric pressure and 100 degree celsius as you know 100 degree celsius the saturation temperature corresponding to one atmospheric pressure if you give a certain amount of heat to the water it will start boiling and the boiling will take place so long you supply the heat until and unless the entire water will be converted into steam at 100 degrees celsius and the reverse happens in the condensation so therefore in the boiling one has to have a temperature source whose temperature is greater than the saturation temperature now this boiling is usually accomplished in practice by having a heating surface or the source which is submerged in a pool of liquid and that is known as pool boiling and that is known as pool boiling pool boiling now to explain the pool boiling let us have a very simple figure like this let us consider a surface like this and let us consider some solid which is the heat source whose temperature is tw and this is liquid let us consider water for our this has a free surface easy understanding water whose temperature this for example atmospheric wa water so tw has to be greater than the saturation temperature in atmospheric condi pressure water saturation temperature is 100 degree celsius it has to be more than that tw now there may be two options the bulk of the water may be at saturated temperature 100 degree celsius or maybe at a temperature lower than the saturated temperature but the surface is higher than that so in one case when it is a saturated temperature it is known as saturated boiling i am not writing everything on the board you just write saturated boiling and when the temperature is below the saturation temperature as you know the terminology used in thermodynamics the subcooled state so therefore it is known as subcooled boiling 
So let us consider a saturated boiling case where the water is at the saturation temperature. My drawing is not that good, so this line is straight, free surface. So water is at saturated temperature Ts. Now what happens? The water near to this is having a temperature more than the saturation temperature. So the nucleation or the initiation of the vapor boiling takes place at the surface. And how does it take place? It takes place through the formation of small, very tiny vapor bubbles, steam bubbles. And the places where this takes place, small, tiny bubbles, is known as nucleation site. And this nucleation of small, tiny bubbles depends not only on the temperature requirement. Temperature is the necessary condition, has to be higher than saturation temperature, but depends upon many other conditions. One of the conditions is that impurity in the liquid, the type of surface which enhances the nucleation. So therefore, the surface and liquid characteristics and the liquid impurities, this actually guides the formation of nucleation sites. But we are not going into all those deep things. We are just studying grossly the qualitative behavior. The nucleation of small tiny bubbles takes place. And then what happens? Big bubbles of different size grow and move towards the free surface. Now moves towards the free surface. What happens? That when the bubble nucleation takes place, it is detached from the surface. Now the bubble may grow, may collapse before reaching to the surface. There are two options. Now whether a bubble will collapse, let us consider individual bubbles. Individual bubbles are flowing. Whether the bubble will collapse or the bubble will grow in size and go to the free surface and ultimately it will collapse. This all depends upon the pressure, temperature and the surface tension property of the vapor and liquid. How I will tell you. Let us now appreciate that the temperature profile is like that. If you draw this side is y axis and this side is temperature. So this is Ts at the surface. Ts sorry Tw. This is Tw at the surface from Tw is at asymptotically reaches, this is Ts, this is Ts, this is Ts, this asymptotically reaches to Ts, this is Ts, rather I should draw this way. This is uh, this is the value of Ts is asymptotically reaches to, this is the value of Ts. Ts, I am drawing it uh, in an exaggerated manner. This Tw is not much above the Ts, but it shows like that this is Ts. So it goes from Tw asymptotically to the Ts, saturation temperature. So what happens? The liquid near the surface and even above the surface is always at a temperature higher than the saturation temperature. This is a metastable state. You understand that this surface is at, for example, 110 degrees Celsius. This is drawn in a very exaggerated or amplified manner and this is 100 degrees Celsius. So liquid temperature here is always more than 100 degrees Celsius. That means liquid at superheated state. This is a metastable state. Now what happens? A bubble which is formed or a vapor bubble as you see which is formed whether it will grow or collapse depends upon the heat transfer. Now because of the surface tension the pressure within a bubble is higher than that of the liquid outside because of the surface tension force. You know that for a bubble it is force sigma by r if you consider the bubble to be a spherical one. Now at that pressure the temperature is higher, the steam temperature should be higher than that of the saturation. That means the 
if we consider that water has to be at saturation temperature for a given pressure for example atmospheric pressure 100 degrees celsius is the saturation temperature but this pressure is more than one atmosphere because of surface tension so steam temperature is more than 100 degree now depending upon the superheated metastable state of the water heat will either come into the bubble or go out of the bubble that means if the steam temperature or the vapor temperature is more than the outside liquid temperature then the heat will go out and the vapor will condense and the bubble will collapse but if it is other way that's why i told it depends upon the surface tension characteristics it depends upon the temperature and pressure of the liquid try to understand and if it is other way that liquid temperature at this metastable superheated state is still higher than the temperature of the vapor then heat will go to the vapor a bubble and the bubble will grow bigger and bigger and ultimately it will burst because as it grows bigger the pressure inside falls because the surface tension force will be reduced because of the higher radius of curvature this is the very a uh, lucid explanation very few books you will get this explanation so this is the basic explanation for which the bubble will grow or collapse but this is not the main picture picture is that number of bubbles will generate with time and ultimately what happens bubble police each other and they flow into random in a random manner with random size different sizes and as you go on increasing this temperature you will see number of bubbles coalesce together and comes in the form of wake a uh, sorry uh, jets and columns of bubbles and that create a big chunk of bubble to flow and that is known as slack flow that is known as slack flow so there are various regimes one is isolated bubble flow isolated bubbles then jet vapor jet vapor jet all these things appear vapor jet and creates a slack flow and therefore the entire flow becomes heterogeneous two phase heterogeneous flow where liquid is there number of bubbles with randomly moving different sizes they coalesce they collapse they form sometimes the bubble ejects in the form of jets they form a big chunk of bubbles and make slack flow and this is entirely a discipline which people are pursuing in research two phase flow where it is relatively easier to capture that by high speed photography the different regimes of this heterogeneous two phase bubbly flow and to explain the different regimes physically but theoretically it is very tough but still we do it theoretically with the aid of cfd because analytical treatment cannot be applied here it's such a heterogeneous two phase flow so therefore you can understand very much it is not that easy of a free convection or forced convection flow over a flat plate or flow through a simple duct so that's why the theory in boiling heat transfer is so difficult but what happens this typical two phase flow makes a agitation in the liquid and makes a better mixing creates turbulence for which the rate of heat transfer or heat flux at the solid surface is enhanced and this boiling heat transfer with this thing in your background can be explained much in a much better way through the very classical and popular curves known as boiling curve which i will show you now can i this is the pointer task chain at the pointer theek hai sir are it eh it is sir italy sir now this is a standard 
boiling car what is meant by boiling car this question will be asked i tell you nobody will ask you to make a scale analysis and derive the exact from exact solutions the poisley velocity distribution or the nacelle number 4.36 48 by 11 but the employer will ask you this question what is a boiling car there will be something which will be useful for you because this car is used in the practice now what a boiling car means so all these things you know that boiling phenomena that this is such a complicated phenomena we know qualitatively how does it take place and it is very difficult to make a theoretical analysis this is a boiling state liquid air superheated condition it transport takes place let us consider what is let us see what is a boiling car boiling car is a car where in the abscissa we put the excess temperature now excess temperature delta t e is defined in case of boiling as the difference between the solid surface temperature which initiates the boiling t w minus the saturation temperature and this definition remains as it is even if the boiling is subcooled boiling that means whether the bulk of the liquid is at saturated temperature or subcooled temperature doesn't matter the excess temperature is defined like that and ordinate we have the heat flux watt per meter square this is the heat flux now what happened is that this curve since this is in the abscissa will be explained with the excess temperature that is delta t as the independent variable and we will see how the heat flux this is experimentally obtained curve how heat flux is changing with that now initially this actually quantitative data this is plotted in a log log graph so this quantitative data it is not written in the figure is for water at one atmospheric pressure otherwise the quantitative uh, figures have got no meaning this will vary from liquid to liquid so so long the excess temperature is up to 5 degree that means 105 degree celsius there is very insufficient bubbles generated not at all there is no nucleation at the surface usually there is no trace of bubble and the liquid is heated simply by free convection as it happens for any fluid that it is heated at the bottom cold at the top so it will go rising and there will be a free convection loop free convection current takes place so it is free convection and the heat flux versus delta t follows a power law model in free convection which appears to be linear in a log log plot as you know there are certain things you have to know readily because your employer will ask this question nevertheless theory is the most important thing is a necessary condition you must know the theory in depth but at the same time not at the cost of certain practical information then those people will tell that you don't know anything the convective heat transfer there is a thumb rule that free convection if the flow is laminar heat flux is proportional to delta t to the power 5 by 4 because heat transfer coefficient is proportional to delta t to the power 1 4 that you have already come into picture that we have we have seen it has come into picture that nacelle number in free convection is always proportional to grash of our rally number to the power 114 uh, uh, laminar free convection that means heat flux is proportional to delta t to the power 5 by 4 similarly in turbulent flow heat transfer coefficient is proportional to delta t to the power 1 third this is for information just and the heat flux is proportional proportional to delta t to the power 4 by 3 so therefore if somebody asks you can tell that the slope of this here yeah, wow sorry slope of this car depends upon laminar and turbulent this appears to be a straight line so from origin to a this is a free convection flow then point a represent o n b that means onset onset of nucleate boiling now this boiling with the nucleation side that means with the vapor generated at the surface is known as nucleate boiling the boiling is nucleated nucleate boiling so this nucleation starts oh what is happening my that is the problem with me so nucleation starts and what happens the isolated bubbles are generated more and more bubbles are generated so as we increase the delta t the heat flux increases sharply now the point b is written to demarcate this region from a to b which is specified by this temperature delta t change from 5 to 10 degree 
which is the isolated bubbles regime. These are the different regime. This is the free convection regime from origin to A. Then A to B part is the isolated bubbles which grow in number. The coal is, they collapse, but the flow is governed by the formation and movement of isolated bubbles. Then from B, what happens? I told the number of bubbles are so much that it is ejected from the surface in the form of jets. And this enhances the heat transfer much more by creating more mixing and turbulence in the fluid. And this regime B to D is the jet and column regime, says B to D. But there is an interesting fact within this jets and columns regime, a point C is an inflection point. What is that inflection point? This inflection point represents that the, you see the curvature is changed. That means the heat flux still increases, but with a decreasing rate, that the slope decreases. Which means in terms of heat transfer coefficient, if you see, up to this point, heat transfer coefficient increases with delta T. But beyond C, heat transfer coefficient decreases with delta T. So that heat flux increases with delta T, not in the same proportion of increase in delta T. That means the slope decreases and we see that there is a less decrease with delta T. This is flattened out after C. This is the inflection point where the slope changes its sign and curvature changes its sign from increasing to decreasing trend. And at D, incidentally, it reaches the maximum heat flux, which corresponds to 130 degrees Celsius for water at one atmospheric pressure. Here it is the maximum heat flux, after which a very interesting feature is found that it drops. That means as we go on increasing the surface temperature, increasing the delta T excess temperature, this is dropped. Why the heat flux drops? The reason is that after some time, the number of bubbles at the nucleation site coalesce together and makes, just like a flame condensation, a thin flame of vapor. And the heating surface is blanketed with a vapor, flame of vapor. And that flame of vapor produces a additional thermal resistance. And the thermal conductivity of vapor is much lower than that of the liquid. So after the formation of the vapor, what happens? Suddenly the thermal resistance increases, for which the entire picture changes. From here, the nucleate boiling changes to a, reg a regime which is known as flame boiling. This is transition zone. I will explain that. That means from this point onward, the flame boiling starts. That means the blanket of vapor takes place. This is not just number of nucleated bubbles, but a continuous vapor which puts an additional resistance because of its low thermal conductivity in the rate of heat transfer for which the heat transfer or heat flux gets reduced with the increase in delta T and reaches a point minimum which is known as lead and frost point after which it again increases I will tell you afterward but why this part is known as transition that during the within a regime where the nucleate boiling just is converted to the flame boiling at delta T 30 up to delta T 120, the things becomes transition. It happens in all natural phenomena. Transition means sometime it is nucleate, sometime it is flame. That means sometimes if you observe, it has been observed in experiment, I will show you the experimental setup. I am sorry that I cannot show you a video uh, thing. It could have been much better that Sometimes there is a continuous vapor blanket, sometimes it disappears, number of tiny vapor bubbles. Again, the blanket, again the vapor bubbles, which start, which happens even in the transition from laminar to turbulent. You know that the transition takes place in a pipe flow at 2000 Reynolds number. But between 2000 to 2500, the Reynolds number, the flow becomes sometimes laminar, sometimes turbulent, sometimes laminar, sometimes. This is the but peculiar or typical characteristics of a transition zone. That's why this is known as the transition flame boiling after which when the delta T is more than 120, there is no transition. There is a stable blanket of vapor flame and the boiling takes place 
through this vapor flame the bulk of the liquid is boiled and thereafter what happens obviously the temperature increases from the minimum point it again goes on increasing and at some high temperature radiation heat transfer will come into picture so it is a monotonically increasing trend but in practice we don't go to that range so this is a typical boiling curve with different regimes the onset of nucleate boiling this is the isolated vapor regime this is the jet regime and this regime the heat flux increases tremendously in a steep rise after c the rise is not that steep there is an inflection point where the heat transfer coefficient decreases heat transfer decreases at a slower rate than that in delta t after reaching that it is dropped because the flame boiling start it is the onset of flame boiling and this maximum heat flux point with the onset of flame boiling is known as the critical heat flux what is critical heat flux you must tell this is the critical heat flux sorry this is the critical heat flux and then after that this drops and this becomes a transition regime within this delta t after which this goes increasing and this minimum point is known as leiden frost point now the most interesting part which is asked to many students even many experts they cannot answer that if you make an experiment in the laboratory which was there in our heat transfer laboratory also i don't know whether you have done the experiment with this in not which was first done by nikuyama that is known as power oh, that is known as power control that is known as power control heating apparatus what is that he made an experiment to determine the boiling curve what he did he gave a nichrome wire here for heating this is the end where he applied a voltage e potential difference by electrically heating the nichrome wire and he slowly varied the power so that it is known as power control method and measured the temperature of the nichrome wire by a thermocouple and plotted the value of delta t and he kept this water at a temperature of t saturation and measured the heat flux by an instrument so what he observed in his car which everybody observed we observed in our student days and you have observed in your student days i do not know whether you have done these experiments or not the similar experiment was there in our laboratory that after this car here maximum heat flux this part of the car and this part of the car this is given by a dotted line to show the transition nature is missing that means when we go on increasing the temperature we see coolly that heat flux is increasing we are very happy i we are relaxed taking tea and ah, readings we are taking from the temperature indicator and the heat flux indicator so we see that this part is. but after reaching this point suddenly we see the wire is melted Cut. circuit is broken the entire experiment is stopped why wire is melted this is because sorry of oh, this way i cannot take class this is because that the temperature we found after reaching this point suddenly jumps up to a very high value even if i don't change the power even if i don't change the power at all by a dimmer start or a variac we control the power those of you who have done the experiments you know but suddenly it changes to a very high value jumps which is more than the melting temperature of the material why it happens because of the formation of the thin flame of vapor the there is a drastic increase in the thermal resistance heat flux so therefore at this temperature so this power for example at this power which creates this temperature because of this immediate reduction in heat transfer coefficient temperature jumps we cannot have any control we cannot have any control so the question come said then how how then we can generate this car yes you think from your physical understanding this car to generate you have to make an independent control of temperature not by a power control here the that's why sometimes very intelligent employer who are little theoretically biased not like a routine employer they ask that why this particular uh, experiment in known as power controlled experiment this is because we 
control the temperature by controlling the power so that we don't have any fundamental grip over that temperature. If you read my book, it is written in a very ex lucid explanatory manner that it is not uh, controlled like that. But when we reach that particular power which gives this temperature corresponding to this maximum heat flux, immediately the instantaneously the heat transfer coefficient is reduced because of the formation of the vapor and immediately vapor blanket it jumps to a very high temperature. But if we could have controlled over the temperature which numerically can be done and can make an infinite small it's oh, horrible and if we can make an infinitely small resolution of temperature variation from here we could have obtained this part of the car. Similarly in the cooling side there is a hysteresis that after this it suddenly jumps here to a lower temperature. So this car, experimental car, where we miss the part and have the hysteresis is solely due to this power control method of doing the experiment because there is no other way out by which we can make the experiment by an independent control of the source temperature which we can vary at that point with a very small resolution. Is it clear to all of you? I think that uh, this ends our discussion on boiling. Is there anything on boiling? Boiling heat transfer. Then next is I tell you there is no point at all of mugging any formula, any empirical relation. But just for your information I am telling you in boiling the heat transfer coefficients and the critical heat flux are given by several researchers from their experiments and standardized work they have been published and they have been used by the industry people there is no credit of mugging this formula but you must know that these equations are empirical equations which involve apart from the temperature density all these things surface tension coefficient which is very important sigma and another uh, is not very much well known another factor which takes care of the surface liquid interaction. Some unknown parameter they tune it to the empirical equation. So, you will see all the empirical equations in the terms of temperatures, density, surface tension coefficient, okay, uh, density difference obviously and the uh, enthalpy of boiling or vaporization all these things are there. Professor Rosenhau at MIT is one of the fathers in the heat transfer field of uh, field of boiling heat transfer he had several correlations known as rosen's of correlation if somebody asks you so can you write the rosen's correlation it is simple answer sir i do not know exactly the correlation i cannot recollect it there is no credit in it so there are a number of correlations you can see from the book but basically it expresses heat transfer coefficient and heat flux in terms of the pertinent variables that govern the mechanism of boiling which I have explained and if you know this thing it is more than enough at this stage. Thank you.